Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Alaska. Uh, Pedro Bay on my Snow Runner hard mode playthrough. Um, just coming into daylight. So at the end of the last episode, I kind of got myself in a little bit of a predicament where I came and decided to do this delivery of this humongous trailer with the dairy. And then when I got here, it was like midnight in game and I didn't want to wait until sunrise and I didn't really want to drive in pitch dark and deliver this huge trailer. So I went off and did something else. It was towards the end of the episode anyway, so I would have been pushing it to get it done in, in the episode and make it uh, fit properly. So I went off and, and grabbed the upgrade just to round out the episode. And then, as I said, at the end of that episode, we would do this one at the start of this episode. So what we're going to do is... It's just about daybreak. Put the lights on anyway, because they look cool. We're going to pull out around the corner. Grab some fuel, because we have a um, semi-fuel carrier trailer. Just parked around this edge here and then we're going to drag this back to Mountain River but I just wanted to do it in the daylight probably without bashing my engine to bits on the barrier I'm busy admiring my huge the trailer that we're carrying the, yeah. it looks pretty big doesn't it wow that's a big trailer. It makes you realise how much that bit of road slopes. I've never noticed that that road's got a tilt to it before. Because normally, any other vehicle wouldn't even notice a little bit of a camber like that. Uh, engine off, let's get some fuel in. Although this is pretty good on fuel, this truck. But let's fill her up anyway. And then we're going to take this up through... The kind of snaky path, the main road, basically, out into Mountain River to deliver. And I think we have three high saddle large deliveries to do. Uh, I thought last episode that we had two. Oh, wow, that's actually tilting quite a lot. Look at how tall it is. That might be the tallest trailer we've done. Yeah, I thought we had two, but then we unlocked another one. So by completing, I think, drilling equipment, that unlocked another delivery. So this, is, <laughs> this actually is now starting to feel a little bit precarious because it's such a big trailer. How tall it is. A bit of sticky, horrible mud to come through here. Just underneath this snow. I'm sure the dairy is up for it, but... So I've just read a comment to giving me a heads up that the Russian map is much harder than so Tamiya as in the, the, the Russian Tamiya map much harder than Michigan and Alaska and I'm enjoying Alaska I'm enjoying the snow but it seems to be going by really fast I know I haven't finished yet and I know I'll underestimate the logging missions probably will take ages but we seem to be doing really good progress and and if anything, if if Tamir slows that pace down a little bit again, I won't object to that. You know, it's not like I'm trying to blitz this game. It's just it seems to be in Alaska. Maybe it's a combination of trucks and so on, but just seem to be getting loads done. So yeah, if if the challenge goes up in Tamir, I'm up for that. that sounds good. Although it is back in the mud. And, and for Tamir, probably 
the Tega. Obviously, I'll take the Tega back because that's where all its upgrades are that it's been missing out on. The fact that I don't have race suspension and big engine for it. So the Tega will go back and I will almost certainly buy the Azov 53 or something, is it? Um, and then we'll see about what other trucks from the current stable might get deployed there to help out as well. Oh, that's quite a tilt, isn't it? It looks good, though. This is actually a bit more dangerous than I thought it would be. Oh. Wow, that feels quite... My heart's racing a little bit there. That felt like that could go. With the, with the tall trailer, you really sort of feel every every tilt in the road so far so good the dairy's doing its job So the dairy's hunting gears a bit there, down into first, up into second, down into first quite a lot. I've got the high range gearbox in at the minute. So I think I will just, like I'll temporarily, it might be a bit mad, but I'll try whack it into high. But that's just going to be way too fast, I would say, for the conditions. Yeah. Dropping it into low for this muddy puddle. It's good, I'm liking this. And when we start thinking about, I know it's way early to be thinking about a new region. When you start thinking about a new region, though, you have to question which trucks you keep and which ones you might end up selling. Because you're not going to deploy every truck to a new region. You kind of only really need to keep, as long as you do like I did in Michigan, which is 100% completion, there is no reason ever for me to go back to... Uh, a Michigan so therefore any truck in Michigan is just kind of idle money sat there it's wealth that I own the account has that asset like the Chevy pickup truck for example I have that asset sat in Michigan and I'm not going to use it and I probably wouldn't deploy it to any other maps because as I go through the maps I'll just get better scouts I'm not saying necessarily that the Hummer is a better scout than the, than the Chevy, but as you go through the maps, you will get better scouts. It's like you kind of need one truck. You don't, you don't need more than one truck for each kind of specialism role. So, yeah, I think I think the the Pacific P16 that I own, which is currently in Michigan, because I never deployed it to Alaska due to no snow tires. That's probably, maybe, useful for me to keep as a high saddle mud truck. If I don't replace it with a different Pacific. In mud, it probably will outperform this one, I should think. But yeah, it's starting to think about would I keep the trucks or would I sell them? And I think 
you know, as a as a gamer, I might get sentimental and say I want to keep the Pacific, but as a owner operator, that's a luxury you can't really afford. And hard mode is basically you're operating as an owner operator, so you need to make business decisions. Oh, now, whoa, what did I just go over? Oh, that's that is the anti-terrorist barrier. Look, look at look at what that's done. Look at what that's done to my axles. That stupid barrier. That did a lot of damage. Uh, X. It's actually taken out a wheel, yeah. Luckily, I carry spare wheels. So that's one of my two spare wheels gone. But yeah, anti-terrorist barrier. I knocked it down with the horn and then got complacent and just carried on driving and talking. And then what's that stuck in? What am I stuck on? That's my leg stuck on that barrier. The That's the trailer leg stuck on that barrier. That is madness. That barrier is... It's the, it's the left-hand leg of the trailer. I'll put those barriers despawn. Huh. Why isn't it despawning? I'm not... I'm, I'm caught on it, definitely. Not impressed. That stupid little barrier. Look at the trouble it's causing me. It's just taking out another tire. Look at the amount of damage it's doing to me. It, right, it's taking out my fuel tank as well. So, look at what that's just done. That barrier. I have a right to be irritated with that, don't I? I'm leaking fuel. I'll stop talking. As it happens, the Hummer is here. For no reason other than the fact that while it was dark, I drove it up. Um, because there's a upgrade and a scouting mission to do on this map. So I need to get it there and fix that fuel tank so I stop leaking fuel all over the road. I can't, that's my first experience of those barriers doing that much damage and wrecking the gameplay. Because that's a, that's a bug. I don't care what anybody says. that There is no way that that barrier would have just locked my truck and that trailer in place without the barrier just sliding out of the way. I haven't got enough repair points to fix the truck completely, but I do need to fix that fuel tank urgently. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What just happened? Looks like that rock just stopped me. Right, repair. So, roof rack, 150 points. Mainly, get the gas tank fixed. So I'm not, I'll stop leaking my fuel out. Then I need to put what I can into my suspension. And then I'll do that wheel. Uh, 
That's all of my repair points done. So I've just got enough to limp it home, hopefully. Wow. I, I have a right to be annoyed at that, don't I? I'm not being a bit whingy there, am I? That barrier just wrecked it. Change truck. I'm glad it happened in the daylight, so at least I could see it and see what was going on and show it and talk about it. How much fuel did I lose? I'm oh, not too bad on fuel still. Gotta get off this rock that I'm stood on now. I'll drag the rock down with me. All right, see if we can nurse the rest of the way because our suspension is is pretty broken. We haven't got a lot left. So no more mishaps, please. Can't believe that. Right, all the rocks are gone from my undercarriage. I mean, it still looks cool, don't get me wrong. I still think that that would be a good thumbnail. But... <laughs> I'm gonna I am gonna call that a bug in the game. Whoa whoa now that was just bad driving. <laughs> Look at that alright. That was just bad driving. Look at what I've done. I was busy eyeing up how cool my trailer looked and drove right up that lamppost. Power post. Get back on it, get focused. Oh, well, that's pretty steep. The camber to the right there, I don't like that. I'm going to try and ride the ridge of this road. Because that looks to me like tippy territory. And if this trailer tips over, I would be having to buy a big crane, I think, to get it back. It was the right thing to do, wasn't it? You need your wits about you on that mission, I think. I'm going to be glad when this thing's delivered. This is a lot more stressful than I thought it would be. And I'm especially glad that I did it in daylight now. Right. Let's go. And I've said it before, but I love that frosting effect that they have certain times of the day when they frost the vehicle up. That's cool. Right, let's make sure I know which one I turned down on. I think it's the second one. Yeah. So down to here. Down here. In to deliver. And then I can come around to the sawmill. Because there's a service trailer. And I can fix the rest of my repair points up. So just drive carefully. Until I get this thing delivered. It's a good truck. I don't dislike it. It doesn't feel as planted as the Pacific P16 did with big trailers. But then I've never tried this trailer on the Pacific. So I don't really know. And the fact that this has got chains is allowing it to do the job fairly well. Driving carefully, I said. That might be a... I think I need to take it back and get around that corner a little bit more... ...widely.
without bashing the barrier. Needed to go into a bit wider, I think. Still a bit tight. Try going proper wide onto the snow a little bit. There we go. There we go. Big hill. Oh, barriers of doom. Just in crawler gear, more or less idling, to give me engine braking on that slope. That seemed to work. Let's get it delivered. Um, <laughs> as excited as I was about delivering this big trailer, I'll now be glad to see the back of the bloody thing. I think that was a little bit more stress than I thought it would be. I want to do that again, that's the trouble. I want to learn from the mistakes and do it again. But unless I do it in campaign mode, there's no chance. No do-overs. I want to convince myself that I learned some lessons on that delivery and could do a better job a second time around. Alright, there it is, delivered. Not that much money for the type of hassle it gave me. But anyway. Let's get ourselves around and get repaired at that sawmill. The service trailer. And then into the other delivery point and get the other high saddle. Which I think we take back to Northport. Right. Repair. Service trailer repair all. So we're back ship shape in Bristol fashion. We're just missing one of our spare wheels but other than that we're fine. Oh, <laughs> nearly, fa nearly face planted into the trailer. Similar kind of proportions to the last one. Not quite as tall, I don't think. But yeah, similar proportions. And this one, we have to take 
So let's just make sure we've got the right one tracking. Drill rig disassembly is this one. Right, okay, cool. This has to go to the port in Northport. So we're basically going to follow the hill up. I think it's probably quicker to go through via White Valley to Northport. So, because from where I am now, White Valley is up the hill and there's the gateway. And then inside White Valley, the Northport Gateway is just there. So it's a really short drive to get to the Northport Gateway. And then inside Northport, I can either come out here or I come out here. So yeah, I think it's quicker to do via White Valley. And we'll do it via White Valley anyway because it's fun. Let's do that. Right, so yeah. Up the road into White Valley, grab some fuel on the way. And hope that this is a bit less eventful than the last one. I want some fuel out of you, but I don't really want to knock you over. So let's fill up. Oops, wrong button. Let's actually try to refuel. Alright, that scout fuel trailer is getting pretty low as well. So we haven't got an awful lot of fuel on this map. It's the thing to bear in mind for the thirsty girl, really. And that trailer can behave itself. Otherwise, there'll be trouble. I haven't bought a large crane yet. But, dropping one of these trailers on its side <laughs> would be the thing that caused me to buy a large crane. So this is quite a steep climb. I'm going to drop it straight into crawler gear. But we do have all wheel drive and always on diff lock, so should be okay. And uh, no, no, that's not safe. I was trying to go wide as well. Better. Oh, 
Ooh. All wheels spinning. Is that my... I think the trailer legs bottomed out there a little bit. Because I'm not a massively high saddle. I think that is what's happening there. Put a winch off that side. But yeah, I think what's happening there is that on the brow of that hill you can see that the trailer wheels are off the ground. I'm on that front lift axle. It's the only trailer wheel on the ground is the front lift axle. And my trailer legs are bottomed out on the brow of the hill. So I'm going to see if the winch can force me past that brow of the hill, which it's doing. That works. <laughs> These big trailers are a little bit of stress, aren't they? Because it's the tight turns that's the problem. And what that caught on. But I need to go as wide as I can. And then I need to swing back the other way. For that S bend so I don't clip that rock. And then I've got to go wide enough. I'm just putting this in crawler gear, guys. I'm having a bit of a. Uh, and then I've got to try and get past this lamppost. So I've just about cleared that rock. The next question is can I clear the lamppost? Not quite. Yep. No problem. He says with false bravado. hesitate to say it but this should be a fairly simple run down through the map of Northport uh, there's some anti-terrorist barriers on the road blockage here-ish to be careful of but generally so we're going to go right past the front of the garage down this road into the port And we've got a fuel carrier on the way that we'll pass, so we should be fine to probably get fuel on the way out, to be honest, but we'll see when we get there. I can barely see the truck, that's, a, that's one of the interesting parts of this. It's, it's really hard to see the truck and the, and the wheels of the trailer at the same time. This whole, what is high range? How fast is it on a road like this? 
No, 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 no. I guess I can maintain my... I can control my speed a bit better with sticking it in high oh, and then feathering the throttle to keep momentum to allow high to keep working gives me a bit of control over the speed. A bit more careful pushing them out of the way. bit of a pinch point here so I need to go as wide as I can into it and then stay wide mm, should be alright to kick that trailer side through Good job, devs. Good job. In in general, I, I I grumble. I will grumble at the that barrier destroying my wheels and getting my trailer stuck the way it did. I'll grumble about that. But in general, I think the challenge level of this was quite good. This high saddle stuff. S bends a little bit tricksy. Two wheels on the armco barrier, yeah. Lights on, bit of dark coming in. Yeah, the trouble with leaving it in automatic is that when you are feathering the throttle it causes it to hunt the gears whereas in high range and feather the throttle you can maintain some momentum and it feels like you get a bit more control over speed let's just stop check my fuel very good this truck is pretty good on fuel
So I've mentioned a large crane a couple of times in this episode. I don't know whether... The, the, unless I tipped the truck over that desperately needed the large crane to recover it. There's no contract or mission reason to have one in Alaska. And I don't know if there's a contract or mission reason to have one in Tamir either. So it might be that the large cranes, for all I know, having come to this game 18, 18 months after it was kind of hot, if you like, for all I know, the cranes were introduced in a later DLC and none of the early missions require them. I know there's the big tree logs at some point that needed them. I kind of expected when I came to this map, when I saw the four slot large pipes, that it would need a large crane, but it didn't. It just said, yeah, it's fine. Move that with your little yellow loading crane. No problems. So yeah, I don't even know at what point in the game I need the large crane. I do know that the Paystar is very good for it because it's a very stable base. It's a big truck. Right. Disposed of all the junk. Drill rig disassembly. No green tick on it yet, but that's presumably a step towards it. Um, 320 XP. Nearly $4,000. So, what do I do next? Let's have a quick look at... So, we're level 27. And one of the two missions we've just done... Yeah, would have been the one before. Because the one before was like 780 XP. So, that's leveled us up to 27. Right, so what we'll do first, I don't know how long it'll take, but we'll take the hammer and we will spiral up to the top of the mountain that it's parked next to, because in here we have the mountain road and I know that there's an upgrade somewhere up around here. I don't know exactly where it is, but it's roughly around there somewhere. So we'll come down in here and spiral up that hill. Get another upgrade and tick off that task. And then the only other task on there is lost tools. And lost tools, I think, is a case of finding, I think there's a crate there. So we need the the pay star with its crane for that. So let's let's get this upgrade and get this mountain task done. It's not a bad type of activity to do while it's dark. I'll check out the duration and see if there's anything else to do after that. But for now, let's just get that done. Because that would then be this scout finished with this map. Because I know that the other three upgrades are in White Valley. Ah, 
So that's that's the upgrade's right up here at the top anyway. Perfect. So what is it? Oh yeah, I remember now. I, th I did know what this one was, I just forgot temporarily. So that is the biggest of the engines that will go into the A-Star and the others. So the Twin Steer and the Caterpillar all share the same engine mounts. But Paystar is already a thirsty girl and there's a bigger engine for it. We'll see. I'm bound to chuck it in just to see what it does, but yeah. Accept. So that now puts us at 20 out of 23 upgrades. And I know roughly where the other three are on White Valley. So that's pretty good. Uh, there's nothing else that I need to scout for on this map. What's this? Oh, maybe. Maybe the contest needs a scout. Maximum damage. So I've got to deliver a scout 800, which is here. I guess you got to tow it without damaging it to this boat station in seven minutes. What route would you use for that then? And would you tow it with the Hummer or would you just bring the Tega in for it? I think you'd bring the Tega. Personally. Or a trailer. Hmm. Alright, not the Hummer anyway. I, I would use the Tega or I would use something with maybe even, I've never bought one of them, but maybe even that add-on that does the uh like a vehicle recovery add-on that you can get on some trucks. Maybe maybe that's what that's for. So don't damage it. Chuck it on the back of a something else and let it carry it. All right. After much deliberation and given the duration of this episode, what I am going to do is the last of the heavy deliveries with a high saddle. So what's going to happen from your perspective as a viewer is that I'm going to drive out of these gates and as if by magic I will see you in White Valley. It's almost daylight now so by the time we get there it'll be full morning and I'll pick up a trailer and deliver it to the aerodrome. And that's just because it's the obvious thing that fits within the amount of time that I've got. The rest of them are all big deliveries. So yeah, I'm going to um, see you guys in White Valley presently. Alright, here we are. White Valley. Nice sunny morning. And we are approaching the drilling maintenance or drilling equipment site. Pick this trailer up and it's just got to go to the aerodrome. So this should be a relatively, should be, famous last words. A relatively safe delivery. And then if I'm right, this is the last high saddle task that we had. So it's kind of closing out the episode with all three of the high saddle tasks done. Feels like a good thing. Yeah. So, what's my route? 
It's going to be out here, across the bridge that we repaired a few episodes ago. Nice bridge. Down past the service hub. To here. I think for this trailer I favour a sharp right and take the snaky road around into the aerodrome. Rather than skipping across country anywhere here. I think that's what I fancy. Plenty of fuel. Good truck. Got the trailer on. Plenty of daylight. No anti-terrorist barriers in sight so far. Let's get on with it. Announce our departure. Sharp corner out. And once we finish this one, we could be finished with this truck for this region. Unless, like I said before, unless for some reason I decide to stick the low saddle on it and use it for that or maybe even use it as an off-roader to go down and rescue that Scout 800 I suppose is a possibility but no probably I would use the Taker for stuff like that <laughs> you can't see the truck It does feel good. I aimed and ammed a lot about um, which task to do next. And this is the only one that is a task I could complete in about 10 minutes of airtime and editing out the, the journey backwards and forwards to, to make the episode the right length. Everything else looks really complicated. I need to get my head around the order to do things. Um, I suspect I need to do the North Port port delivery first and then while I'm there pick up the containers that are needed to go back to Mountain River. Right, so this is my sharp right. Tell you what. I could, can I? I back this up and with the opposite lock on it a little bit. Uh, rather than trying to go to the end and sharp right, I could take it over this little bit of snow. Can, oh no, there's that barrier in it. Getting past that barrier is going to be the challenge. Right, scrap that. So, swing wide. I think the path of least resistance is the route I took with the last trailer on the BM which is in here past my fuel tanker so not into the garage I think that sharp corner with those power poles on it is a bit much for me
extracting. Oh, I'm, I got loads of fuel. I'm really surprised at how fuel efficient this dairy is for the size of the truck and the type of weight and cargo that it's hauling. All right, so this is this is off road, but I think this is less bother than trying to get over that, get get around that um, power pull sharp right hand that we were just trying to do. That tree stump on the left is the only real hazard on this one. So I'm taking it out wide and then cut it back in here. And I am on that tree stump. At least I knew it was a hazard. See if that'll do it. Yep. That'll do, donkey. a little bit of trailer abuse. I have to assume they're not planning on putting this on an aeroplane and flying it out of here. I don't know why that why I'm delivering it to an aerodrome to be honest, but I mean what are they gonna do with this at an aerodrome? But I have disposed of all the junk and I've got the tick on the regional task. So that does feel good. And it's their problem what they do with it. Maybe they're going to drive it off Mr. Lone Wolf's ramp at the end and just dump it in the sea. So, I will leave the episode here. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed it because that was good. That's to, to get three high saddle heavy deliveries done in one episode feels pretty good. Uh, it might not have been what I planned at the start, but it's just the way it worked out, and it, and it actually worked out for the best. Got some good stuff done. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next one. I hope you are too, and I will sign off here, say thank you, and goodbye.